L3B. Uh, I think as I go on in these videos, um, I'm really dealing with, as far as the books are concerned, uh, engines that are perhaps uh, a little bit uh, less popular. The 6L3B and 8L3B engines were big, heavy engines. The 8L3B, with its Gardner gearbox, weighs about 4 tonne. So you really are talking about a substantial number of meat here. Uh, books. Uh, the book that we use here is 62.2. And I can't quite make out the price. I think it was 20 shillings. Um, it's fine for our purposes. Very useful, clear illustrations. Uh, lots of information. It's fine. It's fine for our purposes. Again, I would suggest that... Uh, as far as LTB are concerned, any manual is as good as the other. Uh, we're mainly talking about marine engines here, uh, possibly the odd um, railway railway engine. Spare parts, um, something similar. Uh, this is really very interesting here. I've got two here. I've got one which is 567.1. It was priced 45 shillings. And that was issued uh, on the 6th of February 1969. Uh, I've got here the engine number as well, 168088. There's history in these books. And I've got another one here, um, which is number 567.2, and it's priced at £3.25 in new money. And that was on the 21st of August 1972. Now, if I've got my sums right, um, that price in the price of the, the older book was £3.75 in new money, and this one is £3.25. So that would lead me to believe that the price actually went down after decimalization. Um, hard to believe that, but it, it, it appears to be the case. Now, the 3UC gearbox, which matched the 8L3B, we use book number 46.4. Again, it's fine. Price 10 shillings. Uh, I'm not too sure this has a date on it. No, it doesn't appear to have a date on it, but I would say it's, it's whoops. Uh, no, I can't quite make out the date. Sorry about that. Now, uh, this book is, is fine. Uh, it's, it's fine for our purposes. But uh, just something I need to point out here. I'll just read you a wee section here from it. Um, removal of the oil pump. Now the oil pump on the 3UC and 2UC gearboxes is down in the bottom underneath the main shaft. So getting it out is not easy. Place the gear lever in the neutral position and remove the gear case cover. Uh, quite a job in, in itself. Disconnect the astern clutch le lever link from the camshaft plate. Hmm. Um, that means that you've got to go back to the parts book. That's if you're green, if you're new to all this thing. And you've got to identify those parts to know what they're actually talking about here. Release the set screw in the cam plate and slide the cam towards the crank as far as possible to disengage the bowl on the lower shaft. Again, not easy going if you're trying to follow the book. The point that I'm trying to make to you here is um, that the men who were reading these books had to have a good command of English. They didn't have uh, PDF files or they, they didn't have graphics or they didn't have exploded diagrams or um, they didn't have video links. All they had was the instructions that I have in my hand here. So they had to have a good command of language. And they had to have the patience to sit and read these works, these words very carefully and go and look them up. That doesn't happen nowadays. That generation's gone. I made the same point in the video that I shot about the Whitwood Spanners. Men of that generation could do calculations in fractions in their head to the nearest sixteenth or even one thirty second of an inch. You're talking about a whole different um um, mental agility than perhaps we have now. I've made my point. 